Good morning and happy Friday, everyone. Thank you for joining the call today. We'll be talking about Microsoft Dynamics CRM Online and activating the internal use right. Um, and this is the last of the IUR activation series. Uh, we've had the Office 365 IUR activation and also Microsoft Azure IUR activation calls where we talked about each of these products and the steps to activate your internal license, internal use license. My name is Chinmay Bhavani Shankar and joining me today will be our CRM online SME uh, subject matter expert, Corey Hansen, and of course, members of the MPN support team. Going over the agenda, I will give a quick introduction and overview of useful resources for internal use rights. I will also talk about activating and assigning your Dynamics CRM Online internal use right licenses. There is a knowledge base article, which is the go-to resource, and I will be walking through that which has um, the screenshots along with the steps that you need to take to get the software license and the key. And uh, Corey will take over after that to give you a little more context as to how you can use Microsoft Dynamics CRM in your business. And then there will be, we'll open it up to Q&A. Of course, as with the previous calls, if you're not familiar with the format, during this hour only, if you send me a message on Yammer with your MPN ID and phone number, we can have a support agent contact you to walk you through your activation for Dynamic Serum Online. If you don't get all of your questions answered or if you have additional specific questions or if you have some errors coming up, please feel free to send me a message on Yammer. Again, specific to the Dynamics CRM Online IUR activation, send me your MPN ID and your phone number. So I've done this overview again a couple times, but it doesn't hurt, so bear with me, please. Internal use rights is a cloud services and on-premises software benefit in MPN for Microsoft Action Pack subscribers and partners with the silver or gold competency. There have been partners who've reached out to me saying they've followed the steps, but they don't see any licenses. So if you don't have an Action Pack or a competency, you will not have any of these free license of licenses available to you. Microsoft offers internal use licenses to its latest software and cloud services, giving partners the opportunity to use them in their business and experience it themselves. Um, why should you use your IURs? Research indicates that partners that use their IUR benefits sell three times larger deal sizes than partners that don't use their benefits. Now, sales enablement aside, there are four other reasons to activate and use your benefit that you're already paying for. First, you get first-hand knowledge of features and capabilities. Second, you perform um, internal, you can perform internal development and testing on latest technology. You'll reduce the cost of running your internal business and also increase productivity of your internal teams. Now you can get a snapshot of your IUR benefits and eligibility and consumption in your partner summary report. This call specifically, we will be focusing on Dynamics, Microsoft Dynamics CRM Online. Now, what is it? It is our customer relationship management solution that enables companies to market smarter, sell effectively and productively, and care everywhere. We provide social insights, business intelligence, and productivity with one Microsoft Solutions, and we deliver Microsoft Dynamics CRM in the cloud, on-premises, or with the hybrid combination. We also offer mobile CRM apps and platforms that enable you to manage your customer relationships on your mobile devices, along with tools that integrate data and reporting from social media directly into your CRM application. There are about 4.2 million users and 40 thousand customers as of today and the revenue growth per partner over two years has been two times. 
coming down to the specifics of what internal use right licenses you have. So as part of the competency for, so for CRM, cloud CRM um, competency, as you can see in the table, for silver, you get about 10 seats from CRM competency, and for gold, you get 20 seats. You get, um, this is, I think, in addition to the 15 seats you get from a silver competency core benefit, and 60 seats from the gold competency core benefit. So if you have a cloud CRM competency, in addition to the core benefits, you get 20 um, seats for silver and 40 seats for gold. To the first uh, subscription, which is the Microsoft Action Pack subscription, you get zero seats initially, and you get five seats when you sell at least 50 seats of Office 365 or five seats of CRM online within the previous 12 months. Corey, um, can you explain a little further um, for the Action Pack subscription? There are zero seats initially, so they don't get any internal use licenses unless they sell. Kind of sounds like a chicken and egg problem. Um, is there a workaround for that at all? Right. So there, there is ways to um, get access to environments. So you think of you, if you have a, you have a prospect you're selling to, um, how do you demo it if you don't have access to your own organization? Um, I'll put in the chat window here. We have this site called MicrosoftDynamicsDemos.com. Out there, you can provision um, unlimited number of demos that you um, can have access to for up to 30 to 60 days. And there they have templates. So if you want to, maybe you have a retail customer or banking customer you're proposing CRM to you, we have templates and solutions out there that you can provision. So things are already customized for you for that specific vertical or industry. And then this gets you going a little bit quicker and has some demo scripts as well. Um, so that would be my first say, if you don't have access to an environment today, definitely take advantage of those of that demo site. Perfect, thank you. And if, if I'm already selling Office 365 and I have about 50 seats sold, then also I get access, or I, I can also get internal use licenses for um, Dynamic CRM Online, correct? Correct, yep. Perfect, thank you. You can also easily keep track of all your IUR licenses. There's a IUR license calculator. So if you go to the link that's on there where you can see what licenses you have, and if you have additional need, you can also kind of gauge um, how much you'll have to pay for, how many more licenses you'll need and how much you'll have to pay for with the different competencies. So let's say you want to get an additional competency and you want to see how many additional internal use licenses you'll have. So you can use the license calculator to do that. Before we actually jump on to uh, the knowledge base article, I'd like to go over some of the useful resources. You can download your IUR benefits and go to the internal use rights site that gives you a basic overview. There is a knowledge base article where, which I'm going to walk through about activating and assigning your IUR, the CRM Online IUR. Additionally, for Dynamic CRM Online, there are some more resources. So the first one is Getting Started, which is which has a so Corey just sent it over to me recently. It is a culmination a collection of a lot of links with videos on how to get started. It has ebooks and articles, everything to help you get started and get running. There is um, another article where you, they talk about getting started administering uh, and deploying Microsoft Dynamics CRM online. And in the same section, there is a what's new section where you can learn about Microsoft Dynamics CRM online 2016. It is quite a mouthful to say the entire product name. So um, additionally, on Wednesday, December 16th, there is a session that Corey and his team is hosting about growing and managing your business with CRM Online internal use rights. So you can register through the link. This deck will be up on Yammer. And um, again, keep in mind and mark your calendars. It will be a great uh, follow-up to this call where we kind of walk you through activating your internal use rights. You can go take it one step further.
This is the stay informed slide, which I talk about um, on every call, but it's a collection of all the necessary links that you will need along your partner journey that talks about the partner community. You have all the training links, worldwide partner conference, everything you need to kind of stay updated with uh, the Microsoft Partner Network. Upcoming partner calls for every um, in-person or online virtual training calls, please make sure you know where to find the hot sheet. This is the link that's on the slide. That will have everything for the coming two months, so you can mark your calendar, you can see if there are events in your area. And of course, the I, this is the last one of the IUR activation series. We've had a call for Office 365 and Azure, and this is the last one for Dynamics CRM Online. The call resources and recordings are all on my blog post, um, so you can go there to get the links and the resources as well, and they're up on Yammer. The next call that's coming up is the new partner orientation on January 20th at 9.30 a.m., where I will walk through the MPN 101 and give you a basic overview of the benefits that you get. Of course, um, I'm also planning to do a cloud competency attainment call series where we'll focus on each competency and talk through that and get a subject matter expert to kind of answer your questions. That's coming up in January. So now let's move on. To the knowledge base article. So I hope everyone can see my screen. I'm actually walking through the article um, now. I haven't seen the, um, the article or I haven't done any of this implementation, so I, I don't know. I'm new as well. I'll be asking my questions as I go through, and um, members of the support team will be answering my questions and Corey as well. So when you open the knowledge base article, it gives you an overview. Um, about internal use rights, a little more information. We just talked through the slide of how many licenses you'll get as a new partner. So the first step here is to go to the Microsoft Partner Digital Download Portal. And you sign in with your Microsoft account, which was formerly your Windows Live account. And then you click on the Microsoft Online Services section. And you will come to this part where they, you'll, ha, you'll see the software keys and license benefits. Now, um, my first question, I think, you do I have to be an administrator in order to get um, to see what software benefits I have? Anyone from the support team? Absolutely. Hi, this is uh, Bernie. Yes, uh, the answer is correct. You would have to have global admin rights and another feature within the partner portal is called uh, download privileges or download rights. Uh, there can be only three uh, users within the partner admin center uh, only to have access to this uh, download portal. Uh, if the rights are being provided. It can be changed upon request uh, within the organization. The primary program contact can change them. And if it, they're not being used, well, you can assign those privileges or those rights to somebody else within the company to have access to this uh, digital download portal. Perfect. So I'll have to be the admin or get the download rights. So have the administrator give me the software download rights. And there could be only three. Is that correct? That is correct. Three within the company only uh, can have access to this portal. OK. And so what happens if my either primary program contact switched companies or is no longer with us and I don't know the ID and password, what would I do then? Then we can get in touch with anyone, anybody else within the company uh, with the global admin rights to uh, assign privileges. In case nobody else has, has access, then we, uh, the partner can call directly to the Microsoft Partner Network. And upon uh, request, we can also provide uh, this kind of privileges to the partner after validation. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. So, 
again, uh, to reiterate, you'll have to be the admin or have the download rights. You can um, click on the grant privileges to additional people. There, that's the links. If you want, if you are the primary program contact and you want to give someone else the download rights, there is uh, the viewer permissions link uh, also, so you can see what permissions you have. And if you don't have the admin right, you can get the administrator's contact information depending on how big your organization is. Now, once you actually click on that and you get through, um, assuming you have the download rights, you will look at the, the list, the product list, and select Microsoft Dynamics Serum Online. So you'll click the addition symbol to view the product key applicable to your program membership. And depending on your program membership, it'll tell you um, that you have earned which benefit based on your participation in MPN. So the gold core benefits and the gold additional benefit toolkit. So again, we talked about this. If you have a competency, you, have, you get a set of core uh, licenses. And if you have a CRM competency or a cloud CRM competency, you get additional benefits. So um, will the keys be separate for both of them? Yes, absolutely. It'll be shown on a separate row. Uh, what are the core benefits? What are the additional uh, cloud or our competency benefits or incremental benefits? And again, if you have more than one location and in case you have a competency on each location, it will display a separate or a second line item with a different token per uh, per location. Okay, so when I so there are different tokens. Does that mean they have to be associated to different accounts, or can I combine them? How would that work? Yes, so it can be. They can be combined in the same uh, Office 365 uh, portal or, or account, and uh, for everybody, uh, they can assign it to anybody within within the account, but in, yes, they, they can all, let's say we have more than one and the total goes up to, I don't know, 100 mm -hmm. uh, licenses, we can add, a, add them all up on the same account. Perfect, thank you. Sure. So once you click on the plus sign, it'll show you the actual token key. It also tells you how many seats you have and the expiration date. So you will know when it's set to expire. So another question at this point is, if, say, I'm activating this and there's an expiration date, um, and will there be more than one if I'm about to renew or if I've already renewed my competency? Will I have two sets of tokens, one for the previous one, one for the one after, if I haven't activated my IUR yet? Yes, in case in the event that you just, uh, let's say, uh, your competency expired, I don't know, yeah, on December 10 and you renew on December uh, 11 or, or forward, you will show two sets of tokens with a different expiration date. When we generate the tokens, we provide more than 12 months to uh, for, for the token to be active and mm -hmm. available mm -hmm. for activation. Uh, usually it's 13 months, so there will be a 30-day uh, window when you will show the previous token of previous year's competency and the new token after you renew. Okay. After those 30 days, though, that second token or that second set of token will be uh, removed from the list and mm -hmm. you will only keep the rem or, or the active uh, tokens. Okay. So if I'm activating my IUR for the first time and I see these two sets of tokens, I should take, I should use the token that has the farther or the later um, expiration date, correct? Yes, you are correct. The, the, the expiration date will show 2016, an expiration date of the year 2016 uh, for this case, and, and next year it will show 2017 and so on and so forth. And yes, you will have to uh, uh, select the one that expires later. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Now, once you select the link, once you um, look at the token, you'll select the link at the bottom of the page in the special instructions area and navigate to the Microsoft Dynamics CRM Online Key Redemption Portal. So 
now once you have the token it'll send you to the CRM online site if you're an existing partner um, and you'd like to activate your product key on your existing online tenant you'll have to sign in before you activate your product key so each product key may only be activated once so this is a little confusing um, what does this mean exactly so if I have a CRM online online tenant already I'll have to sign in before and then activate the product key is that right well what this will be is if you say you have an your IUR for office for 65 already activated and now you want to add CRM into your mix of products you would want to sign in to that Office 365 tenant, so CRM gets provisioned into the same tenant. And the reason you'd want to do this is because integrations with SharePoint, Exchange, um, OneNote makes it, it's, they basically can be done a lot easier. And in some cases, it's the only way they can be done is if mm -hmm. they're in the same tenant. So, so you'd want to make sure you sign in with you know, your existing account. Um, if you do want one completely separate, then there is that option just to start and not sign in as, as an existing customer. Um, we've had a couple times where some, maybe in the office, you know, like, you, like you mentioned earlier, there's, you know, you could have up to three people that have access to provision your IURs. Well, maybe, um, you know, Joe down, down the hallway provisioned Office 65 and I didn't know it, and mm. I went and provisioned CRM, and now we have two different tenants. Mm. You know, so, that, so you want to make sure, you know, if someone may have already provisioned your IUR for Office 65, go find that person and, and you know, see what the login is for it and make sure that you get them in the same tenant. Okay, gotcha. So, okay, so if I want them both to be combined, then I, I should probably use my Office 365 tenant and then activate this because it also says that once the product key has been activated for online tenants, those seats cannot be moved to another online tenant, right? Right. There, <laughs> There is a process to fix in, in those accidental cases, but it's not a quick process so yeah it's better to get it right the first time if, if possible so yeah and also so if I have so, um, if I'm dealing with some customer accounts for example then I also need to make sure that I've signed out of all of that and I'm activating it on the account that I want to um, use on the tenant that I want to use correct yeah, very good point there. Yeah, because I mean, I sometimes recommend just do in private browsing so you make sure you're cleared out of everything or nothing's cached. But mm -hmm. that's that's kind of what I've offered, you know, to some partners. I'm not sure if if the support guys there have any other other comments there, but um, yeah. that would be my suggestion. Okay, sounds good. So if I don't, let's say um, I'm assuming everyone has their Office 365 tenant already set up, but if I don't, um, and this is the first time I'm starting up, let's say, then I'll I can sign up completely new, right? So I'll be um, starting like a new Office 365 account and then activating the CRM online tenant, and then I can go back and activate my Office 365 IUR onto the same tenant. Correct. Yep. It, yeah. It doesn't necessarily matter which one you do first because behind the scenes we're we're both using the Office 365 platform. So yeah, exactly. Okay. Perfect. And so once I do that, so once the product key has been activated, cannot be moved. Please keep that in mind. Um, you're already an Office 365 customer. You can sign in, or you can answer these questions and just start completely anew. So to activate the product key on a newly created online tenant, click the checkbox and then click Start. And then you will enter the 25-digit token code that you copied from step six. So the token that we got and we could see, make sure you copy that. And then you can enter it in here. <clears throat> so the other question here is, let's say I've already activated it. I haven't quite used it, but I've activated it in the past. And now I just renewed my competency and I have a different key. How would I go about putting that key and extending my tenant? Like, how would that work? Uh, what happens is after you add the key and the keys value, you click next, done, add and product keys. It'll it'll display a, a different message saying you if you want to add or renew. In this case, of course, we always suggest to click on the renew option because mm. in the end, if we click on the add option, you will end up with more licenses than you need, and the end date will be prorated. So uh, after step eleven. Uh, in case you already have an existing uh, CRM subscription, 
and it's just about to renew or, or not, it'll display in another message. So the option to go is uh, to click on the renew button. Okay. So, and it'll also tell me here, right? So if I put in a product key that has already been used, it'll tell me it's no, it's not valid here in step 10. Yes, in case it is used, it'll display a red message saying the keys are been activated. So that's the moment we need to find out where this key was activated. Okay, perfect. So just to clarify, what happens if I click on add another product key when I intended to renew, but I accidentally click on that and I, I added it on? Sure. What happens is, uh, of course, next to the button of either add or renew, it'll show the result of clicking on that button. If you take a little quick look it'll, uh, next to the add button, it'll tell you in case you have 10 and you're going to renew for another 10, the result will be you end up with 20 licenses for six months duration. And the renew button Absolutely. will show you will end up with 10 licenses for a year duration. So, gotcha. uh, okay. so in I won't case... Okay, I won't be charged or anything, but it'll just kind of take away from my time. So I'll have 20 licenses for six months as opposed to having 10 licenses for an entire year. Absolutely correct. If I make yes. that mistake. Okay. Yes, that's what happens. Okay, thank you. So once I'm done adding the product keys, then you enter all the required information. Now, this is for if you don't already have an Office 365 account, right? This is um, when I'm creating my new user ID and all of that jazz. Correct. That is, that is correct. So, okay, so once we get there and I wanna add a new user and assign a Microsoft um, Online IUR license. Um, so this is again within Office 365 in the CRM Online dashboard, correct? Correct. Yep. Right in the Office 65 portal. Um, when you initially sign up, it does create the first user, the admin user. But now this would be if you want, you need to add more additional users to, to your tenant and get them access to CRM online. Okay, perfect. Now, so I think, Corey, this is where you kind of take over. All right. Let me see. I'll present my desktop here. And folks on the call, please, um, if you have any questions, please type them in the window. Um, I'll start taking them. Corey will now take over and walk you through some of the scenarios um, that you can use CRM online for your business and actually um, show you the dashboard and see, uh, tell you how you can uh, go about adding users and additional specifics. All right, so I already have an Office 65 tenant set up here, and you'll see within my tenant, um, I have CRM, Office, Power BI, you know, I basically have a little bit of everything in here. And so this is, again, where it'd be, if you have Office 65 already, plan to add CRM into that because integrations are so much, so much easier and you get a lot more functionality out of that. Um, but if we go down to the active users, just like um, we kind of left off with there on, on that KB article, mm -hmm. here you have a list of all your users. So if you've already been using you know, Office 365, say for a year or two years or, or even just a couple months, you probably already have a bunch of users. Maybe your users are federated from your Active Directory domain already. Mm -hmm. Those same users are, can be added to CRM. So basically you just need to add a license to them and you're good to go. So. Like for example, if I had an existing user, I select that user and let's come down and let's click on its assign license area. And in here you can see I have all the different licenses for you know, CRM, Office 365, et cetera. So I would just make sure that they have a CRM license, just a simple checkbox. Mm -hmm. And then that user then gets added into CRM. And the only thing I need to do on the CRM side then is decide what role I want that user to have. Is he a sales manager, a service manager, is he a I, system administrator, you know, I can give them specific privileges on the CRM application itself, but they do need a license in order to be able to log into it. Okay, one second, Corey. Um, we have a question here where uh, Manuk is saying, I'm trying to add the CRM license to our existing Office 365, but when I clicked on step two, I get the message, can't add that to your current account. Hmm. Support team, do you have any insight on this? Yes, uh, this could be 
caused by multiple scenarios, we would need to take a look on the Office. What kind of products do we have act or reactivated on the Office 35 account, and and uh, go from there. I think this is an option to support outside of the call because it involves specific other products uh, within the Office 35 portal. Okay, sounds good, Manu. Um, I, I'm sorry if I'm totally butchering your name. If you want to send me a message on Yammer with your um, MPN ID and a contact number, we'll get back to you. Um, and Corey, coming back, you were saying that you we can assign roles. Uh, what is why would I want to assign roles? What is the implication of that? So the after you have the license, the license basically gives that user rights to log it, to, to try to access CRM, but in order to really get into CRM and, and actually see information, like I can you know, see see the, the dashboards, I see my accounts, I see you know, my opportunities, I need to have a specific role in CRM, and so the role is kind of like your security role, like it is, it is going to kind of guard what you have access to, to do once you get into CRM. What if I don't assign a role? So I just say I assign you assigned um, Ankit um, here as a user, and you don't assign a role. What happens then? So what would happen is when you go to, when they click on CRM. So basically, if they log into the portal as the user portal, they'll have options like up here where they'll see CRM now. Because I have a license, I I would see this little CRM box. So if I click on it. Um, it was supposed to, it would normally would log me in, but if I didn't have a role, you would basically get an error message saying no security roles have been provided to this to this user account. Okay, so, and so I won't you be able basically to... would be stopped at that point. Okay, okay, so I, I won't be able to do anything or use it for anything. right. Okay. And one one thing just kind of so if you have global admins, so like obviously your your admin user you set up initially the first one that gets created is a global admin in the portal he's going to get a license for CRM and he's automatically going to get a system admin role because we do need to get the, the global admins right into CRM because without the first one we can't get, get anyone else to assign the roles. Yeah. So any global administrator that gets a license for CRM in the portal automatically gets a system admin role in, in CRM. So they're good to go. It's only those that maybe are not a, a global admin in, in the portal, maybe they're just a normal user or a sales user, um, they need to get assigned a, a specific role in CRM. Gotcha. So if I'm the primary admin and I'm activating it, then I already have the global admin role. It's yep. just the additional users that I need to make sure that I'm assigning a role to them. Yep, correct. Exactly. And taking just one step back, what would I be as a partner? What would I be using my CRM online internal use for? If I'm not very familiar with all of sure. This. So a few things. I'll just going to jump over to the application and just kind of show a couple of the main areas. So if if I just kind of hover down here, the three main areas are sales, service, and marketing. So you know, in a normal CRM instance, probably you know the majority of the time it's probably used in a sales scenario where I'm tracking our accounts, um, the emails that we have going on with them, the contacts that work at those accounts. Maybe some, you know, lead tracking. Maybe we, we deal with leads and we convert those leads into opportunities. So we kind of have that our sales pipeline. Um, that's that's a, a a big use for CRM. There is a custom, again a customer service side where some partners or and customers as well are using that to, to run their support business. So the customers can email into a queue. We can take those those uh, messages, convert them automatically to a case. Um, some some partners will set up a, a external portal or. Customers can come in and log cases on a portal, which then get dumped into CRM, and engineers can start working on them. So, so there's a lot of different use cases just for normal like sales and service activity. But the one kind of main powerful um, thing for CRM is it's it's basically think of it as a platform where you can build on top of it. Whether you're whether you're a developer or not, you don't necessarily need to be a developer to start customizing CRM. So I could create my own, you know, fields, my own forms, my own, and we call them ent entities, where I want to track something about about a customer, and so maybe projects. So in CRM, by default, there is no project um, capability, but if I could create an entity, or I could reuse, like say, the opportunity entity, rename it to project, and now I can track projects that I'm doing for a customer. And so the, it's really a powerful platform to to build upon if you don't want. You know, if you're already using some of the out-of-the-box things, but you want to extend it further, or maybe you just want to extend it further and not use the out-of-the-box, you know, capabilities. So there's there's many different scenarios um, that you can can start from. All right. Um, a couple things. Maybe I'll just see if there's no questions here. I'll just jump into you know, like 
being on the sales side, tracking your your accounts and your contacts. Mm -hmm. You know, just for something simple. If you're thinking, well, I don't really have a scenario to to track or to use CRM for, but just think of it. You everyone probably has you know a set of customers they work with or another another set of companies you work with, and maybe you just want to for to start with is just start tracking the communication or the things you're doing with them. So here I just, I'll just pull up a, a datum corporation here. It's just one of my con accounts in the system. And you can see just on the account screen, I can get access to see who are all the contacts that work at this company, maybe some recent opportunities we've had with them, recent support cases. I can still see all these are still active. So maybe we want to check in to see what's going on there. I can see all the activities from phone calls to emails to tasks that we've done um, with them. Um, I even have Yammer integration. I know you guys have been talking about your guys' Yammer site. Um, you can you know, use Yammer within CRM to you know, type questions and post them out to certain Yammer groups to get, you know, help get answers from specific people that you know, maybe not be CRM users. You know, maybe you, when you activate your IUR license, you have, say, you have 15 CRM licenses, but maybe you have 100 people in your company. Well, if you have all 100 on Yammer, those all 100 can be communicating with CRM users, and the CRM users can see it right in, inside CRM. So it's nice and Nice, uh, another added benefit by integrating yeah. with the Office 365 stack. So, so do you, could you, what would it take for me to add this customer account and, and have all this integration, right? So well, how much of this is already done based on the fact that I've linked my Office 365 account and how much of this am I doing and, and putting effort into integrating? Yeah, so basically once once you have the, the CRM system, you know, activated or have the IUR activated, um, everything you see here is pretty much out of the box. I mean, if I just click on, you know, the, the new button up here, uh -huh. um, I'm able to, actually, let me just refresh my screen. My IE window looks like it's all hung up here. So if I just go ahead and click on the new button, that's going to, you know, just allow me to create a, a, brand, a brand new account. I could import accounts if I already have you know, maybe you're tracking a bunch of your customers already in, say, in Excel. Well, I could take that Excel file, import that into CRM, and now quickly I have all my accounts right in in the system. Uh -huh. But you know, if I enter all this, this new customer, and you know, there's other fields you can add. Yeah add fields and you know, whatever you want to track with it but just by adding you know that that customer in there I now have a new record that I can start filling in contact details okay. um, you know we're integrated so I get integrated with exchange and email so if I start sending email like if I just do an, a new email from whether I do it from here or from my Outlook client I can track that and that would automatically get added into here so without really doing a lot of customizations it's pretty quick to get it up and running and start tracking those emails and the email the the session that you mentioned um, earlier today that's on the 16th we actually go through is setting up the email configuration gotcha. importing yeah. data and then doing some a little bit of minor customization so we go through a couple scenarios okay okay so the call on December 16th then we'll kind of walk through this basic scenario of like add your customer in there track their emails track your communication yeah. and kind of just have everything in one place so um, you have your Yammer and other integration done. Yeah, exactly. And it comes with out of the box charts and dashboards. So depending on the data you enter in the system, you know your your dashboards could start lighting up um, right away. You know, if you like for leads, for example, if you fill in you know the ratings or the status, I could come over here and pull in the charts, and I already have a rating chart. But it's quite pretty quick and easy to start creating some of those charts, and we actually do that as another scenario we talk about on the 16th as well. So okay, okay, perfect. So um, an hour long call on the 16th, is that right, Corey? It's, it's about an hour and a half. We, we cover a little bit of what you covered with the IUR activation, but okay. probably a good hour of it is talking through scenarios and just doing hands-on demoing. So. Okay. All right. Um, are there any other questions on the line? And Corey, did, did you have anything else uh, that you also wanted to show? Um, I definitely can. If, depending on if there's questions or not, we could, we could go through a couple other... Uh, uh, the customization side, like again, I mentioned, is is a really powerful um, thing. And just to get get started, let me just show you something really quick here. I'm just going to go into my lead, my lead um, uh, form. And so here now, I'm just looking at the lead. And because I'm a system customizer, maybe I'm looking at it like, hey, you know, I want to add a new field to this because we want to track something different or add some additional information here. Well. Again, I don't have to be a developer. I could just go into the form editor because I'm I'm a customizer. I can jump right to the to the form editor, and you'll see uh, once the form loads up here, it's all just drag and drop for the most part. 
Yeah. So while this is loading, Corey, another question is, um, I know I have to go in and renew my IUR key. And let's say I didn't renew it on time or for some reason it lapses. What happens to all my data at that point? So as far and maybe um, the MPN team can confirm that too, but I know with CRM, there is kind of like a holding period where we, you know, the, the organization goes into like a extended period for about 30 days. Okay. And then there's another 30 days where the data is still stored in the, in the data center. Okay. So there is still some time frame there, but um, if the MPN guys could confirm that or if they know offhand. There's Absolutely, Corey. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, yes, there is. After the expiration date, there is a... 30-day, what we're calling grace period. It shows uh, reduced functionality. There will be message across the screens for, you know what, your subscriptions are expired, please renew, etc. And after 30 days, it goes into a disabled status. 30 days after the disabled status still can be reactivated or renewed. And it is possible that the, uh, the information contained in the description can be retrieved. Okay. Okay. And is there any way that I can um, export all of this so I have, in case, um, I, you know, I don't decide to extend my IUR license or if I want to buy additional, how do I export this out? Like, I just want to make sure that if these are my leads and my sales data that I don't ever want to lose it. Yep, exactly. There, there is export to Excel functionality. So okay. if you want to do, you know, kind of the the simplest way is you'll select a bunch of records and hit export to Excel. Um, then you'll you'll have it there. There is, uh, you know, a, you can call to into our um, kind of our billing team or probably even some of the MPN team there. And there is a way to kind of get a ba database backup. Mm -hmm. And that's more kind of more of a scenario where if you want to move to on premise, mm -hmm. so may, maybe you're doing online for a while and maybe you just got some brand new servers. Like, hey, I really would like to run my IUR, or maybe you're Maybe you don't have the IUR anymore, but you want to purchase CRM. You could move to on-premise if needed. So there is there is some switching capabilities there. Gotcha. So it, it goes both ways, right? So if I have something on-premise, even if it's on Excel, I can import it. If yep. I have CRM um, on-premise, I could definitely import it on. Correct. Right. Yep. So if you're on-premise, um, the on-premise to online is, is a little bit more of a data migration, you know, data import. Where if you need to go from online to on-premise, you there is that database export option where you can actually request the actual physical copy of the database. Gotcha. Okay. Continue. Sorry. And Lucy, I know you asked about uh, links to videos to learn more. Um, in the resources slide on the deck, uh, I'd put the link to which was essentially a collection of links for a CRM online and getting help about CRM online. All right. And I'll just make a couple, one last couple things here. So with with the you know form editor up here now, if you say there's a there's a bunch of fields that are on that are available by default that maybe are just not on the form. So I could actually go ahead and just double click on some of these and move them over, or and rename them if I need to. Or maybe I just want to create a brand new field. So if I click on a new field button here, this will give me the ability to I'll just for the simplicity's sake call it new field. And I can choose, do I want a currency field, a decimal, a pick list, a text field, you know, a look up to another entity. You know, I have all these different options here. Um, I just say we'll do a pick list and we'll do, you know, three items here. And we can just, you can rename the, rename yeah. the items however you want. Um, I'll just do that. I hit save and close. And then that's basically all it takes to create a brand new field. So again, no development work, no SQL knowledge needed at all. Just basically point and click. And then if I come down here to the ends, if I can, my IE window will come back to me here. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and then I'll just pull, I'll just go ahead and drag that new field on and then save and publish. Okay. And that's, that's basically the simplicity to start, you know, doing some basic modifications to the system. Yeah. So. Okay. That's simple enough. Um, Michael here has a question. Is there any type of syncing capability? That is, if I wanted to work with the data on an airplane? Yeah. So there's a couple thing, couple options there. Um, 
so we do have an, uh, an Outlook client, which basically is an add-in into Outlook that you can install, and that does have offline capabilities where you can set up filters to say, I want to sync all my accounts and my contacts, um, and that will sync down to a local SQL Express database where you can work offline and then sync up when you, when you have a connect connection again. Um, in the 2016 release, we are coming out with some mobile offline syncing, and so there is some, some options if you have um, 25 professional licenses or more, so this is probably not so much in the IUR, but more for paying customers, they would have access to some mobile offline capabilities. And that may change you know, as far as who gets access to that, but initially it's going to be for 25 seats and above. Um, the other option is our, you know, we CRM online is accessible anywhere. So you know, if you do, do you know, go, you know, get the Wi-Fi in the airplane, you could, you could still technically work with the data as well. Um, obviously, you're paying for the Wi-Fi though. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, so the paid uh, licenses. If I, if I have a certain number of IUR licenses and I want to buy some more, can can they all be combined? How would that work? Yep, correct. So there, there is a way to to purchase additional licenses, and as a partner a benefit, you get them at a discounted rate. I want to say, instead of paying like the normal sixty five dollars per user per month, I think it's forty five if I remember right. The last time I saw the price, so you can purchase additional users at a reduced cost, and I think you can get up to an additional. Correct me if I'm wrong. Any, anyone else on the call? Up to a hundred users of at that forty five dollar cost. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely correct, Corey. That's okay. that's that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, the one, actually, one last thing I'll mention too, because I know you had in the the benefits for you know the competencies. Um, the one thing you can also get is if you have that CRM competency or the cloud CRM competency, is when you're in Office 365 and I click on my CRM tenants or my CRM option, I get to this thing called inst an instance picker, and you'll notice I have a bunch of sandbox instances along with my production. So if you have a, a silver competency and you have one of the CRM competencies with it, um, you get two sandbox instances, so you would actually have a total of three CRM instances you can you know, test and, and kind of mess around with, but then also have your production instance as well, so you have three total. If you have gold and you have the CRM competency, you actually have four sandbox instances that go along with that. So you could really do a lot of demoing and testing right out of your sandbox instances. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about them is you'll probably see here is there's a reset button. So if I do a bunch of customizations and I want to just get rid of it, I can hit reset and that'll put me back to a vanilla install. Yeah. And also when I hit reset, I get the choice of do I want to reset to an older version or the newest version. Oh, I have, you know, in case my I have customers on different versions, I could go back to those as well. So that's another another I've added a benefit by trying to get that CRM competency. Gotcha. Yeah. And also, again, internal use license is also for the partner and their internal use only, right? So yep. hopefully they don't have any. They're not catering to any customers on those lists. Right. Yeah. You wouldn't be. Uh, you wouldn't be hosting any customers in there, but you could track your customers and your sales in there. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Exactly. Sounds good. Any other questions, folks on the line? All right. Um, Corey, if you have anything else, we'll go with it. If not, we'll give a few minutes back on everyone's calendar. No, I think that's good. You know, if anyone else wants a more a little bit deeper dive, definitely that session on the 16th. And you know, with your partner benefits, if you have advisory hours, my team is more than willing to help you. You know, assist on any questions you have with CRM Online and implementing it in your in your company. So. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Corey. Again, a reminder: December 16th at 11 a.m. Central Time is um, the next the deep dive into using your CRM Online internal use right licenses. Again, you have about another 10-15 minutes. If you want to send me a message on Yammer or um, on my email, which is also in the chat window, if you need additional assistance, we'll have a support agent call you back right away. Send me your MPN ID and your phone number. I hope this uh, call series was useful for everyone and you go back and actually activate your internal use rights and this made things easier for you. The new partner orientation call is in January to give you an overview of all the MPN benefits. I hope to see you engaged and active in the MPN 101 Yammer group, and you can reach out to me through that Yammer group at any point in time. Thanks again, and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, everyone.
Thank you.